Hey there, Mayhem Maniacs, and welcome back for episode 3 of Building the SS Dixon. For those just tuning in, the SS Dixon is a search and destroy and sometimes rescue jet powered tanker ship that can haul over 2 million liters of crude for fun and profit. Needless to say, I was never quite like the other kids in school. Want to join in on this fun? Come join us on Reddit and Discord, and you can join our multiplayer server when we're playing. New sessions of Stormworks Valheim and other games happen every week. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button so you'll always know when the next episode is out. Now, on to today's lesson, building the bridge and internal crew compartments. I was really disappointed with the entire bridge and superstructure design. It, you know, it was just ugly. While functional, you know, it's not attractive. And, and you have to have both. You have to have function and looks. Hey ladies, what's up? So, with that in mind, I started by erasing everything but the jet intakes and started over. I got a little overzealous and erased too deeply, but this is a quick fix. While I'm working on this section, I also decided to extend up the funnel and hide the intakes with higher walls. When working on interiors, I like to select one of the door units. Uh, the door with the wheel is the most compact one of them, and it quickly helps me set the proper floor and ceiling heights. I just drag it around and, and make sure I'm building to the right height. Still working in mirror mode, I decided that there would be two entrances into the ship, one on each side, because I'm lazy and I don't want to walk around. From here, we quickly build out the basic shape. This time I made sure to allow plenty of room to walk around the deck of the ship. First floor down and onto the next floor, again with the you first floor down and onto the next floor, again using a door for my guide. This allows me to build out the right height for the ceiling and carve out an opening for stairs. I always prioritize survivability in my ships because I fail a lot and I end up underwater. So we'll be using multiple airtight compartments to help survive the inevitable sinking. One thing I also noticed is uh, a lot of commercial ships use walkways and stairs all around the outside, so I wanted to incorporate walkways around this structure as well. Adding second floor doors allows another way to escape if the ship begins to sink. From the helm, I decided to cantilever out over the main deck. This allows us to have a much larger bridge area while also adding some visual interest. A door at the top allows us to make sure the ceiling height is correct. Already in this form, the addition of support brackets, walkways, and varying profiles makes this a much better looking island. Next, I extended up a mast that will form the base for all of our various sensors, antennas, and radars. You'll want the radar to be the highest part of the ship, or you'll end up picking up your own ship on the radar, which is not the most useful thing in the world. To get to this point took about 20 minutes, but the time flies by as I was super happy and excited with the results so far. When building like this, I just get in the flow and time passes. The video you're watching represented a little more than two hours of build time. It's no wonder that I'm almost at the 500 hours played mark on Stormworks. I'd probably be there already if it didn't take so much time to record these videos and edit them. Now on to the windows. As I've talked about in the past, the angle windows are so fiddly and require building out temporary structures. I briefly thought about cantilevering even further with the windows, but wasn't happy with the look. Adding a row of narrow windows really makes a nice visual difference and something that I normally incorporate into my builds, as well as adding skylights. These extra openings add a lot more light into the ship and makes my time spent at the bridge more enjoyable. A little angled section ties the intake stack to the main body of the island, and from here we begin adding stairs and ladders to the exterior walkways. You'll see a fair amount of trial and error as I experimented with how the ladders would get from the second floor to the deck, finally settling on a U-shaped stair.
Changing up the flat sides of the jet intakes with fluid ports adds some visual interest to the build. Throughout this construction, you'll see this approach of roughing in a basic structure and then refine and refine until I'm happy. Next up, we start adding portholes to the build. I always like how these windows look strong and come in 5x3 and 3x3 sizes. I tend to mix both sizes in a build for more visual interest. With the windows complete, we can begin adding stairs. A space saving trick is to always stack your stairs so that you can fit multiple sets in a very compact space. When growing up, I worked as a draftsman for a home builder before and after going to school for aerospace engineering. These basic principles of room and stair layout still stay with me and it's also why you'll see railings in all my builds. I also just really love how it adds polish to the designs. Speaking of room layouts, now I begin to rough out the crew quarters. I usually play Stormworks with up to six people, so my ships normally have at least six beds. If you want to join this fun, make sure to join us on Reddit and Discord, as well as subscribe to the channel. We'll be starting up a multiplayer Stormworks server only for YouTube subscribers. Six beds fit perfectly, with private captains and first officer rooms while the crew share spaces. Next, we move downstairs to the medical bays. Two medical beds and eight seats is usually enough spaces for any rescue missions that I've run across. Over an hour of building has passed and we move on to the exterior railings. Here I begin to use a bit of color, going with safety orange for the outside of the ship. Now to spawn it in and see how everything feels. Even in this early state, I'm really happy with the various shapes and structure of the ship. Going up the stairs allows us to quickly get to the crew quarters. From the bridge, we have a nice view out of the stone and can get down to the back of the place. One thing I'm not happy with though is how tight it is between the edge of the deck and the stairs. So let's add a cantilever deck section. When I extend out sections, I always like to add some supports to tie the structure together visually. Initially I was thinking of using railings here, but I wasn't happy with the way this was looking. It was too flat, so I decided to extend up the freeboard and create a section of the ship that would help keep us on the deck. I again iterated to get this section just right, experimenting with different angles, chamfered edges, and settling on a series of small angled brackets instead of the larger ones. While I had the angles selected, I quickly added an area of blocks to support the bow props and smooth out the water flow, before remembering that I never actually added reverse gears to the ship. Dropping into the selection tool, I quickly set the two reverse gear boxes to 1 to negative 1, giving the ship the ability to reverse once we actually hook up the logic. As the tanker gets ready for its first real mission, it was time to add in the ability to load and unload fuel. This involves pumps that pump into the tanks as well as pumps that pump out of the tank and connect to fuel depots with fluid connectors, or at least I thought they used fluid connectors. I added hose connectors as well, just in case. This way we have multiple ways of loading and unloading the ship. Using paint to draw arrows towards or away from the pump quickly shows visually whether the pumps are pumping into the ship or out of the ship. Now we can spawn it in again to take a look and inspect our work. I like the way the ship is coming together. The freeboard keeps us on the ship's deck, even in rough seas. 
the openings to the freeboard on both sides will allow us to unload and offload cargo more easily. And now we can move into the ship. And, and see the basic shape of the medical bays. Climbing up our way to the bridge. Visibility of the angled windows under the deck below is excellent. From here we can see the entire loading and offloading operation. Knowing that we'll eventually be going to the Arctic, and just how fuel inefficient my builds always are, made me want to increase the fuel carrying capacity. A large tank in the front will dramatically increase our fuel reserves and help keep the ship from porpoising at high speeds. Or so I hope. Let's be honest, I'm perfectly happy if the thing jumps out of the water and flies away too. Spawning the ship in, we're definitely nose down, but I'm hopeful that it'll flatten out at speed. Time to add in a helm, connect the helm's basic controls, WS to throttle, a to D to rudder, and up down to clutch. We'll later change these controls to actual throttles, but this is a quick way of testing the handling of the ship after adding the increased fuel load. Spawning in the ship and taking it out to moderate seas shows that the bow lifts up out of the water at speed, and we're still able to cruise quite quickly across the water. But these are the results with the ship empty. What happens if we load the tanker up with the full 2 million liters of crude? Dropping back into the editor, we can quickly add fuel spawners to each of the tanks. Spawning it back in, we can see that the ship is, well, not buoyant. Many times we can overcome too much weight with way too much speed, so let's see if we can do that again. Remember kids, when fired from a railgun, even a brick can fly. Things looked promising at first, with the ship beginning to come out of the water at full speed. But the jet intakes get dangerously close to the waterline. What would happen in really rough seas, or, I don't know, a tsunami? Well, only one way to find out. Cutting the engine leads to the ship immediately becoming a submarine. Clearly we have more work to do. After two hours of building, our SS Dixon is starting to finally come together. In the next episode, we'll fix our buoyancy issues and begin painting and detailing out the interior. Make sure you hit subscribe and the bell icon so you don't miss out on our next adventure. Let me know what you liked or didn't like with this episode in the comments. I read every one of them. Thanks for watching and being part of Maximum Mayhem!